Get Puck. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Get Puck Podcast Special Edition. Here with Vito, I'm Matt, and tonight is the uh, NHL Draft Lottery. Uh, so tonight, for anybody, for, I don't know who wouldn't know this, but for anybody who doesn't know, this is the night where the teams that did not make the playoffs are going to have all their little ping pong balls thrown in a mix, and the NHL goes behind the scenes, behind closed doors, and picks out the lottery winners who are going to draft in first, second, third, all the way down to um, 60. This is our game seven, basically. For Habs fans, this is our game yeah. seven. Yeah. So it's about to begin. T- tonight we decided to get a little special. Are we, I got, I got myself a little, a little adult beverage here. My little beer. I think Vito's got a little something on his side. We're gonna sit back. We're gonna take it easy. And we're gonna just let it play out. We are gonna just. We understand that whatever happens will happen. We have no control over this situation. We're gonna just l- see what happens. The that fingers said, are crossed. Fingers and toes said, crossed. Let me ask you this. Let me let me let me ask you this. It's behind closed doors. They show a video afterwards, fine. But I mean, what is it to say they couldn't pull the balls alive? Why 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 don't they do that? And do you believe the NHL is 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 is, is potentially capable of rigging the lottery? One hundred percent. One hundred. There's not a doubt in my mind. Did you see Batman's face when Montreal won last year? He was disappointed. And I mean, people could say he acted it out. There was no acting that. He had the worst poker face ever. So you was like, oh, year, he didn't want Montreal to win? Montreal Canadiens. Oh, oh okay. Oh, 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 what a surprise. What's wrong, Mike? What, 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 what a surprise. surprise. Montreal Canadiens. Uh, how was it a surprise? They finished dead last last year. And they had the best odds to get the number one pick. Now, let yeah, me tell you. well, Montreal in Montreal, maybe he's like, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. one of those. It's, it's I don't been, know. I, th- I think his acting was suspect. Also, I'm gonna it's be real been with you. way too convenient over the years, and the way it's played out for some of the teams to get first overall picks and whatnot. However, some might uh, some might actually say, okay, what what do you say about Edmonton? All those years of first round picks. My answer to that would be. Yeah, maybe Batman didn't want Edmonton, but how the heck did they get so many first round picks? First overall I mean, picks. I, I don't I mean listen, listen. Honestly, I, I sit I sit back a lot of people say, you know what, if it rig if it was rigged, right? You know, you know that there's certain dying franchises in this league that Batman would just be over the moon to throw a, a generational talent like Connor Bedard too. Right? I'm thinking I'm looking at I'm looking at you, Arizona. I'm I'm looking at you. Okay. If you win tonight. It's rigged. I'm saying it now. I'm saying it Listen, now. It's rigged with you in it. I was thinking it, but at I'm the same it. time... I'm saying it. It's rigged. Now, I've also contended with this. Now, I believe Bettman has it against Canadian teams for whatever his reasons. Um, that said, my belief... And this, I'm trying. I know people are going to say, yeah, but you're a Habs fan, so obviously... Eh, eh, but I'm trying to be objective about it. There hasn't been a legitimate super superstar barring price to the side being a goaltender eh, superstar on the Montreal Canadiens it's decades with an s with an s if this is the most popular storied franchise in the NHL if there were ever a moment to give the team that superstar that it has not had for decades this would be the moment. It would be smart to rig it for the Habs to win it, is what I'm saying. It would be it good would be for the league. It, it would be good for the league, and it would be good yeah. for the Montreal Canadiens because they are one of the biggest revenue generators in the entire NHL. Could you imagine yeah. what what that would do for the fans, what that would do for the NHL, what that would do for the fan, uh, for, for hockey in general, uh, to have somebody of Connor, Connor Bedard's caliber with the Montreal Canadiens? The amount the spotlight that would be on that kid. It it would be, I personally think it's tremendous. I honestly think, and I understand the odds are really not there, and, and it's just the way it is, it's the way that the system works. It's it like the odd state that he should go to um Anaheim, and then after Anaheim, it's um it's Columbus, I believe, and then right after Columbus, it's Chicago. So Correct. the the odds are that it'll be one of those three teams. That's that's how odds are 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 are, are dictated. My my 
Problem with that is if you put them in Anaheim, they have Anaheim a has lot a of fan stars. Base. They, they have a fan base. I, I'll say that, but they're the they're the West Coast team, and they're probably one of the I don't know least popular West Coast teams. They they have their own niche market for sure, but I would argue that uh, here in the list of West Coast teams, they're towards the bottom. Is is kind of. That. Why really? Where would you put Anaheim in the popularity of West Coast teams? They've won. They've won the Stanley Cup. They had million years very, ago. They've, okay. they've had superstars through their team and through their rosters over the years. They've actually had very good things. Like they got a good fan base. If I would put, I would put San Jose as a team that ha- that in terms of popularity is below them for sure. Yeah, fair. Uh, uh, to both of them, I think, are towards the bottom. There, there's, just, there's, it's just my, listen. My point was, what a shame. It would be if you throw a guy like this and you get you lose him to West Coast hockey. So you got a whole eastern side that hardly will watch him play. It's like a McDavid thing again. It, it's just unfortunate. Um, if he falls to Columbus of all places, like ugh, please. But you know what? Out of all the te- out of all the teams that are ahead of Montreal in, in the rankings right now, I think Anaheim's I'd the only be- one I would accept. <laughs> yeah, and has no I know. Everybody, I, I know. In front of Montreal, I know. Now we're gonna probably get some dislikes on this video because of that comment. But no, but but listen, it's it true. It it's it is what it is. The Chicago tank job that happened this year was so blatant and disgusting that they really shouldn't get a guy like this. Not to mention the fact that they just ended what was it, thirteen straight years of Kane and Taves of being on their team. They've had their superstar go. Don't, stay out of here, San Jose. Like you say. It's just such a ugh, market. And I mean, it's just like, would it be cool for these teams? Listen, wherever he goes, it's going to be exciting. It's going to bring up fans there. People are going to get interested in their teams. Oh, and that's the point. We're coming out saying it would be great for, for hockey that Montreal gets a player like this, right? We're saying this. And we're, we're, we're Habs fans and, and, and whatnot. But, yeah, we're saying this. Yeah, but saying when, you think, when you think of what Gary Bettman's trying to do across the league and across the it NHL. Right back to my thing. If, it's if gonna things be rigged. <laughs> are, if things are rigged, it's and rigged. If, we, if, we're, if we're being one of those conspiracy theorist type of people for the NHL, then what better place to drop Connor Bedard than I mean, any one of the teams not named Chicago? It's just, I mean, I don't know, man. I sit back if I'm if I'm an NHL executive there and I'm sitting there and this is rigged, and it's probably not, and we're just messing around, but you know what? You never know. If it were, wouldn't you want to throw him on the East Coast so maximum eyes are on him every night? Because West Coast can watch an East Coast game like it ain't nothing. East Coast watching West Coast games is challenging for a lot of people. A lot of people can't be staying up past 10, 11 o'clock at night to watch a game until 12 or what have you. So you limit the exposure of such great talent. So for the sake of the game, it would be better to have him on an East Coast team. Now, if I stick with that logic, that means Anaheim loses and San Jose is out of the picture. So now we fall down to, do you stick him in Ohio? Do you stick him in Chicago? Do you stick him in the the mecca of hockey in Montreal? Or do you stick him in, uh, I'm already forgetting the other one there. That's East Coast. Is it Detroit? Who's Uh, Who's six now? It's late, it guys. Is, it's late. It, it is Detroit. It is Detroit. Okay. So I'm not no, crazy. Mistaken. Detroit also. You know what? You know what? Detroit wouldn't – I mean, I would be kind of pissed because it's not that far removed from their from their mini dynasty that they had in Detroit. With uh, the federal sorry, laws and everything. It's, it's not – well, we were way off. I don't know why we thought it was Detroit. It's, it's Arizona. Oh, that's why, because they're completely out of my mind. No, no, but they are you know the West Coast well, this anyways. A, I, I wanna, I'm going to do a, a one-click sim right now. Do it, because it's starting. It's starting right and I, now. And I hate to say it. I'd love to be able to share my screen, but Montreal won in this one-click sim. Hey, man, I hope so. It's, crazier things have happened. Crazier things have happened. I would love to be able to show this as proof. And another really. thing, I mean, this is just like information that came across uh, that that I read. I think actually, in fact, this little bit of information you might have told me a day ago, because a lot of people were like, "Well, they they just got the first overall last year, so if they did get the first overall overall this year, um, they can't get it again for five years." That is actually incorrect. And even if that were correct, who cares? Who cares? Right. But it isn't because last year. 
they legitimately um, won it. And, yeah, they retain their spot. And so the rule is if you jump and get first and you get that again, you can't have it for five years. So it's not true. Right. If they oh, jump yeah, this so that, year, it would be the first time they get first right. as a jump. Which, which means theoretically if next year Montreal had another bottom five pick, they could actually win it again. Correct. Yeah, Detroit, I'm looking over here. So I'm watching it here on the side. So Detroit's actually nine. Washington is eight. I didn't realize Washington was that high. They they dropped, man. That's why they started trading away some of their players at trade yeah. deadline. And you saw Lars Seller moving yeah. out of there, Orlov, and so on. So, uh, but listen, let me, t- let me oh, tell you this. Man. If Montreal man. does win this, first Please or second, the, the level of excitement that that i would have i can't explain i could tell you this i might have to take off from work tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely gonna i'm definitely gonna jump out this chair i definitely might run around this room i mean i am gonna scream i'm probably gonna wake my kids up it's gonna be a scene i mean well i can tell you wild. this I, i'm gonna apologize in advance if montreal does win and i jump out of my seat you guys might see my belly button and stomach and all that okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I'm just whoa, saying. I'm the just right saying. Watch. Nobody, nobody want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Come on now. That said, that said, you know what? It's a lot of Conor Bedard talk, but I mean, there are other guys that are going to be tremendous assets to the team. And I'm thinking about Fantilli if they land second overall. I'm not going to be upset about that in the least bit. If Bill Daly flips that card and gets to five, and I'll we haven't sweating. been called yet, and we're not, like the Habs aren't there, I mean, you got to have a freak out. I'll that's the freak out moment because that's that's Bedard or Fantilli straight up. That's what well, it is. there's a chance it could there's, be. The it's not even a chance. I mean, forget that 0.3% they get third overall. That who cares? It's Bedard or Fantilli. That would be outrageous. But now let's say because the odds actually, this is the other thing that's kind of messed up. The greatest percentage they have is to actually fall from five and go to six. That's the actual how, how the odds are. Don't say these words. No, but it is. Let's math is math, and I don't care. I can say it out loud. There's no, there's no notion of of having any any effect of what's already happened. The draws already occurred. So you got guys out there that are also going to be massive, and at six, even you still got a tremendous well, player. The, the worst, pl- the worst situation that could well, take seven. place. Forget that. It, well, yeah, for sure. But I mean, that, would, that be would be the worst. Shocking, shocking if you see any of the. The teams behind Montreal, and I mean, once further back, St. Louis down, which is 10 down, jump up 10 spots. Yes, I'd be, I'd now be upset. Be, now would I'd be, be upset. It'd be I'd great, be for, for, and it would be very entertaining, but yeah, I would be upset. No, I'd be, I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. If, if it's not going to be Montreal moving up, I hope whatever team has the greatest odds are one of the teams that get it. Let that be the case. I mean, if, like, the highest you can jump, so it's 11, right? So Vancouver is the cutoff. They can get to one. Uh, no, it's 10 spots. Yeah, it's, it's 10, 10 spots. They're 10 at 10 11. Spots. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. So, so Anaheim, Columbus, Chicago, San Jose, Montreal, your top five. Then anything after Montreal, it's Arizona, Philly, Washington, Detroit, St. Louis, Vancouver. Any of those guys behind Montreal can make the jump. And I mean, you want to like, you want to lose it if that happens. Oh, my God. Oh, it's happening. It's getting so The close. worst part is if a, if a team in the 12 to 16 range wins the first drawing, the first pick will remain with the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, and they go to two, and cool. everybody else falls. Yeah, correct. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they go up 10 spots, right? That's that's what Oh, is that, is that how – so if a team – so if the, okay, so hold on. So if, if the 16th ranked team wins it, they go to six? That's how it works? Well, it says here and teams then, can only move up a max of 10 spots. So that's how it works. So if a t- so if the tenth rank the sixteenth rank team wins it, oh here it comes. Forget it. Forget it. Oh my god. Here we go. The nerves. But yes, here that's how it works. So build. Let's we have get build started. Build here we go. Number sixteen. Number sixteen. Come on. Flip it. All it's right. still the Calgary Flames. Still Calgary, All right. Flames. Calgary stays at 16. Yeah. Yeah. We're okay. going on to 15 now. Be Nashville. Be Nashville. We want to see Nashville, everybody. Be Nashville at 15. Come on. Come on. 
Nashville. Okay. Nashville Predators still at 15. I'm surprised it's David Poyle, not Barry Trotz, but okay. Why not? Pittsburgh. Come on, baby. Be Come Pittsburgh. on, Pittsburgh. Come on, Pittsburgh. We want to see Pittsburgh. you. Yep. Yep. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It is Pittsburgh. It's, it's still Pittsburgh. It's still Pittsburgh. Okay. They're, they're smiling. They were hopeful. They were hopeful. Oh, and they can be as hopeful as they want. The hell with them. Buffalo, be Buffalo. We want to see Buffalo. Man, my heart, my heart rate's jacked. I forgot that Arizona has two tries at this. Yeah. Buffalo. Buffalo. Okay. Buffalo, Buffalo retains. St stays at the 13th spot. Yep. They had a good season. That was a good day. Ottawa. Uh, oh, we're entering season. dangerous territory now. No, Ottawa. it's Arizona. It's Arizona. Well, it's the Arizona pick, but it's Ottawa. Come on. The Ottawa side. Ottawa. Okay. Which is Arizona's pick? Yeah. Bill, Bill Armstrong's already waiting there for the press conference. Like, yeah, <laughs> okay, here's watch. Vancouver. Here's 11. This is this is danger territory. Come on. Vancouver. Come on. We're Don't at 11 do it picks. Don't do it to us. Don't do it. Okay, okay Vancouver, it's stays Vancouver. Vancouver. All right, Vancouver stays Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, everybody smiling. Smiling. Yeah, right, right, everybody, smiling. Everybody big smiles. Everybody's okay. smiling. Okay. St. Louis. St. Louis. St. Louis. Come on, baby. St. Louis Come at 10. On. Come on. Come on, hockey gods. St. Louis. Louis. Okay. All right, St. Louis all stays right, at 10. All right, everything so far is as it should be. Oh, he's not all smiles. He's miserable. <laughs> All right, Detroit at nine. Come on. Oh, my God. Come on, Detroit. Detroit at nine. Detroit. Detroit, Detroit at, at nine. nine. Okay. Detroit, so at nine. Detroit at nine. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my heart's, my heart's pounding. So Washington at eight. Come on, Washington at eight. Show Washington. Show Washington. The Capitals. Oh. Okay, I don't know eight. why. I, 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 hey, I he stuttered. He stuttered like, a minute. I didn't okay. see it. I didn't Here we see go. It. Philly at seven. Come, Come on, on, baby. Be Philly at seven. Come yeah, on. be Philly at seven. The Flyers, okay? okay? Six. This is where it's so at. This, it. where it's at. It. this is it. We, we're, we didn't drop the seven. Okay, come on, baby. Show Arizona. Show Arizona, please don't let them get talked to. And don't drop Montreal. Yes. Arizona. Okay. Okay. Montreal, lowest is five. Hockey gods, lowest come on. We don't, don't, see, don't, don't see Habs. Don't see Habs. Don't see Habs. Oh, it's such a minute odd. Don't see Habs. Come on, come on hockey gods. You, you beautiful, come bald on. bastard, Bill Make Bailey. Come on. Come on. No. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Habs Habs at five. Habs at five. Okay. So Habs are, Habs are picking at five. Habs are picking five. We can now stop talking about Bedard and Fantilli. Okay, four. All right. Now that now does anything crazy happen? San Jose at four. So everything is as should be. Everything is as should be. There was no crazy luck on this so far. Don't, okay, well, now I want Anaheim to take it. Now I want Anaheim to take it. The hell with Chicago and Columbus. Oh, of course, they do the... Uh, yeah, they so got to go to the commercial. They're going to go commercial. Do ah, they're going to they're gonna pull up. <laughs> they're, just, they're just toying with everybody. Okay, so so Habs, Habs retain fifth. That's really good spot, in my opinion. That's a good spot. I mean, realistically, they had greater pro probability of dropping. They maintained the fifth overall. So at that point, we can start kind of figuring out who it's going to be. You figure Bedard's gone for sure. Fantilli's gone for sure. I mean, Leo Carlson, leave Mitch Kopp to the sure. side for a second, but but Carlson is likely there. Is three guys that are for sure gone. Now you got two more, and then you got a lot of decent people right after. You got Mich Michkov, who I also think is going to go before five, personally. You got uh, Will Smith, uh, Zach Benskin, uh, Benson, Benson, rather. Um, our boy in uh, Europe, uh, what's his name? Dvorsky. Dvorsky. So Dvorsky. 
I mean, one of these guys is a hub. One of those guys is a hub. That's how this works. Well, and there's an outside chance for David Reinbacher. That I'd be surprised. I'm going to be real with you. I know a lot of people have mentioned it, but I'd be surprised. I'm not going to lie. I'm uh, I'm happy Montreal's got a top five pick, but and while I didn't know that it was very unlikely that they were going to move up. Uh, yeah, I'm a little upset. I was a little upset. I was very, very hopeful that we would be Listen. we would be cheering, saying that Listen. we're getting that Listen. thing. Listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the odds are always against you from getting the first overall pick. I mean, no matter what, even if you have the top pick like Montreal did last year, the odds were that they should fall. So when you get it, like they just did last year, when you compound and add an additional year that they get it back to back, those are incredibly low odds, like incredibly low. So was I holding hope? Yeah, that was. it would have been cool. It would have been cool. But so far, this thing ran as expected. Every team so far is as they placed. And you can't really get too upset about a situation like that. That's that is what it is. Montreal finished far better than the bottom three teams. So, well, and you know what? It's um, now I'm very curious for the for the the remaining teams because I don't want to see Chicago. Yeah, just let it be top. Anaheim, and we move on. And it's upsetting. And I'm sorry for hockey fans in the East Coast. We'll we'll hear about the exploits of Connor Bedard. Uh, throughout his career, more so than ever seeing them, but say Levy, what are you and, gonna do? And you know what, Blackhawks fans, if you do tune in and you catch this, um, note that it's nothing personal towards the actual Chicago Blackhawks. Fans. I you know they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're great, they're fun to watch. Um, it's just as hockey fans, if I put the, the, the Habs aside, I really don't like what Chicago did to try to get Bedard. The they blatantly tried to tank. The, the the controversy that surrounded them all summer long. So uh, there's there's probably more that than than the tank. The tank job was just like like you guys shouldn't get it because of the Evan tank job that you did. But of course it's all the other crap that went behind the scenes. Um, that's you know and there's scandals across the board and you can point fingers at just about every organization. I'm sure there's things, but you know Chicago was in was in the spotlight quite a bit there. And at this point, you know I'm. It'd be cooler to see Bedard with the other young guys that are already on Anaheim to maybe make that team like a real crazy powerhouse in the West. You know, the Zegris and McTavish. Like, it that could be cool. That could be the big three out there for a while. Here's number three. Chicago. Come on. Be Chicago. It's going to be Columbus. <gasps> it's Columbus. Chicago's going to get Bedard or Fantilli. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> so approximately three minutes ago, we said Columbus had dropped the third. Well, um, we're, not, we're hard, not watching hard, 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 social yeah. media right now. We're watching it as, as it's live being broadcast to us. Oh, my God. Just don't let it be Chicago, man. So their first number one pick. Flip it. Oh my God! It's Chicago. Blackhawks. Oh my God! Wow. It actually it's Chicago. It actually happened. Unbelievable. They had Kane and Taze for over thirteen years, and now they're gonna have Bedard. That is wow. insane. Oh, by the way. So, Chicago fans, if you do tune in, we welcome you to comment and, uh, you know, say in our face. Wow, <laughs> dude. But, wow. That is wild. That is absolutely wild. Chicago moves up to one. Everybody, every now, now I'm looking at social media, everybody is ragging on the fact that Tank, Boo, this is bad, blah, blah, blah. This is rigged, is what this is. This is Batman trying to put a positive light on Chicago now, given all the crap that went down with the blatant tanking and all the other scandals that went there. Now everybody can just talk about, oh, you got Bedard, you got Bedard. 
Oh, wow. That's just wild. Man, you got to feel for Anaheim. You got to feel for Anaheim. Well, you got to feel for Columbus too, eh? But the, you know what? I feel like Leo Carlson's the player that Columbus is going to go after on this. Wow, man. That's wild. Wow, man. That's crazy. I mean, crazy is uh, maybe a tiny bit of a stretch. Uh, Melnick writes mentioned on air today that the high drama was staged. <laughs> a lot of people saying Michkov, Carlson, or Smith. One of these players will be a Canadian. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You know Smith, what? Maybe uh, Michkov, maybe Carlson. I can't see dropping a five. I can't see Carlson dropping to five. But I then again, so so Chicago's definitely going to take the dart. There's no question about it, right? And Anaheim uh, is definitely going to take Fantilli. Well, okay. So if you go based on need, you look oh. and you say they got Zegris and they got Mason McTavish as their one-two centers. Now, the you take the best player available, it's Fantilli. Could it could Fantilli drop an, an extra spot? That's wild. I mean, I don't see it. And he, and even if he did, I mean, what does it matter? He can never drop low enough to make it to, to the Canadians anyways. So No, absolutely not. No. But that well, like like exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm I'm looking, I'm just powering through the tweets right now. Amanda Stein writes it best too. From Kane Taves era right into the Bedard era without missing a beat. Yeah, like that's just not <laughs> you know, I sound whiny when I'm saying it, and I know I do, but it's just it's not fair. It's not fair. You sit back and you had 13 plus years of Kane and Taves, and now you're gonna have the dark right many away. Other powerful players too, like during that uh that team. I mean, and even if I just left it at Kane and Taves, it'd be enough. Yeah, of they course they had other up. guys. They. That's wild. That is absolutely wild. Chicago wins the draft lottery. Yeah, <laughs> more uh, called it. Here, another person. This is so rigged. Called it months ago. Batman trying to save the organization in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is. Uh, so you know, a little Brian tiny Wild, bit wait, uh, rigged potentially. Brian Wild just tweeted: Michkov would likely go to two if if he were off ice issues free. M Michkov will okay. likely be available to Hughes. Will he roll that dice on his uh, on his arrival time? The club will get a top quality player at five: Smith, Leonard, Moore, Dvorsky, all in that range. Oh, definitely, definitely, and all definitely. are excellent. I'm surprised he didn't mention Benson. So he must be not the. Uh, I mean, I didn't. I haven't followed all of Brian Wild's tweets with regards to the draft, but he must not be a huge fan of Benson. But then again, when you look at Benson, the guy plays a a big game, oh, but wow. he is a smaller for he is a smaller forward, and Munchaus has so many of those. But again, at the same time, you take the best player available. Whether I mean, I I I'm a big proponent of that. I'm a big proponent of you take the best player available and you make it work. You don't go for organizational need. I mean, that's that's my belief. Like whoever is best out there, whoever is the the consensus best, it's who you take. Um, well, they're gonna grab a phenomenal player at five. I have no doubt. This is a very very deep draft. A lot of people are saying if there were no Bedard and no Michkov, it'd be Fantilli as a slam dunk one. And this kid could possibly drop the three now, you know. Or he goes two, and you got Michkov, who would be a sure shot one if Bedard wasn't here and you didn't have the the issues uh, out in the East. But you know, could he drop as low as five? And if he does, is that really somebody that Kent Hughes and Montreal wants to roll the dice on? Like Brian, we're all I just, saying. I just, want, I just want to rewind for a second. Okay, I uh, Chicago winning this makes me feel as though like you know how people say you. Tanking doesn't work in the NHL. You don't. You can't tank. Well, this oh. team straight up Bye. did everything they possibly could, uh, possibly could to tank, and they won. Now, yes, a bit of luck worked for them, but they still tanked purposely. They did it. They got rid of everybody. 
including young kids that they had that were talented young kids. And they now they want to get Carter Bedard. I mean, you know what's funny too? I mean, I'm sure everybody went to Tankathon and rolled, you know, and did their 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 simulation like a thousand times. Do you know what what I found interesting? More times than not, and I do mean a lot more times than not. I had teams that were in like the eight and nine range jump up to first many, 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 many more times than Chicago ever moved up. Chicago almost always dropped. Almost yeah, always. You're right. You're right. But again, Tankathon is it's just something. It's, to play listen, with. It's again, odd. it's odds. And if we try to pretend for a second that there could not be any collusion happening here, they had pretty they had okay odds. They had pretty okay odds. They were sitting third best odds that you can have. So things happen, man. For sure. So it's just it's a it's a strange the club, the Columbus Blue Jackets a Twitter handle just posted up a video basically saying who's next. They're getting the third overall pick. And the names they had were basically everybody who's projected in the top five, not counting Bedard. So they actually, and their first one was Fantilli. <laughs> they actually put Fantilli at three for themselves. So why not? I guess maybe they see it as a possibility given what Anaheim has as a. Wow. Down the middle. That is just crazy. I really, really, really would have been like, you know what? Eh, it sucks that the Habs lost and didn't move up. But okay, at least they didn't drop, which I think was a bigger concern. But okay, Anaheim followed by Columbus and Chicago. Everybody got where they were supposed to be and fine. This is like just a little bit extra salt in the wound, I find. Just, just, a, just a little bit of salt. So more than we the, needed. The reason why some people are now suggesting that maybe Carlson drops to Montreal is because there's a belief that maybe San Jose might be high on Michkov and might be willing to, to gamble on that one. I can see Michkov going before five, but that's still I can't. How does Carlson drop to five? Because so uh, Bedard you have Fentilli, Carlson at three. They have they have Smith at three, and because and that's recently because of Bob McKenzie's. Uh, rankings his updated rankings he had smith at three i mean you know what smith carlson michkov i mean i just wish michkov didn't have his stuff but whatever i mean you get any of those guys that's happy days that's happy days the one thing that we got we have to say montreal's prospect pool montreal's got a, a lot of talented players coming now yes just like every team there are some weaknesses or some uh, lack of depth in, on some positions, but they've got a lot of pieces coming. They're at, they're at the point where now we're looking and saying, where do all these players fit? They're going to have to trade away. Well, I can't remember the here. last time Montreal was in a position where you're saying they have to trade away some players. They have, uh, yeah, to, go to get finish it. your thought, I think they have like, they're in the top five deepest prospect pools in the league right now on a lot of people's uh, uh, well, cards. It's, it's because if you look at the terminology, a lot of people are Classify, you know, we're classifying Montreal, we're looking at Montreal as a whole, what young players like Suzuki, Caulfield, or whatever. But in terms of actual prospects that haven't hit the NHL yet, no, Montreal's not in the top five. But if you include Caulfield, Suzuki, well, Doc, and the young, yeah, then, young, then, young, then, yeah, young Montreal's talent. Got a, one, of, one of the most yeah. promising up and coming teams in the NHL. So, to your to follow up to your Brian Wild comment there, why was Benson not there? He he literally wrote why. He says he he felt confident Benson is unlikely at five. He goes anything's possible, but the organization feels that they have enough smallish players, and it would surprise him if they took uh, him at five. Anything's not nothing is guaranteed. Um, that is what it is. I mean, listen, you you can't <laughs> you can't. Uh, you can't get you can't get angry at other teams too too much about where they landed. You can only look at the teams that you root for. And ultimately speaking, at the end of the day, Montreal's likelihood was far greater that they drop from five than keep five. Forget about moving up. So at the end of the day, they got to keep no, where they are. Listen, five is a good spot. And am okay. I disappointed? I'm disappointed because there was a slight chance that I could have we could have had that that you know that superstar that 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 player that Montreal has wanted. For decades, like you said, but am I disappointed that the Montreal Canadiens have a top five pick? Absolutely not. They're going to get a talented player. They're going to get somebody that's going to fit into that roster. Whoever it may be, we don't know because 
we don't know how things are going to play out and what the other teams ahead of Montreal are going to pick other than Chicago. We know what Chicago pick. But other than that, it's a top five pick. Remember, from off the top of my head, the last time Montreal picked five, they picked Carey Price. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm going to see the fifth overall picks historically. Historical fifth overall picks. Uh, where can I do this? Where would be the easiest way to do this? Here we are. All right. Wait. Here's a list. Da, 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 da. How far does this go back? All right. We don't have to go that far back. Let's keep it somewhat recent. All right. So fifth overall picks. Elias Lindholm. Morgan Riley. Ryan Strom. Nito Niederreier, Braden Shen, Luke Shen, Carl Alsner, <laughs> Phil Kessel. Habs, Habs legend right there. Yeah. Carey Price, as you said. Blake Wheeler, Thomas Vanek, Ryan Whitney. Then I believe a miss from Anaheim. I never heard of that guy. Rafi Torres. Let's not go too, too, too far back. Go too Jeff, far. Jeff, we, Jeff O'Neill. We, we've confirmed the, the last... Yermir Yager, the last time, the last fifth time, overall pick. The last time the Montreal Canadiens picked fifth, they picked Carey Price. And how did that turn out? Now some are going to say Carey Price. Uh, oh, Carey he Price. Didn't Stanley, uh, he didn't win a Stanley Cup. He didn't win a Stanley Cup. But at the end of the day, where Montreal's likely not going to get another goalie like that for a very long time, if ever. Yeah. Currently trending on Twitter, Bedard. Rigged NHL. <laughs> oh man, that is wild stuff. That is wild stuff. I'm happy. I'm happy. So it's gonna be, in my opinion, it could be either Smith. It could be outside chance. It's Leo. It's Leo Carlson. But Smith, Carlson, Dvorsky. And uh, I guess outside chance too, that'd be Benson or Michkov. Yeah. One of, I mean, one of those I'd be players. very, very surprised if they went off the board. I'd be very surprised. If they went off the board, it's because they did the one thing that a lot of fans hate is they didn't go for the best player available. They went for organizational need. And, and that, that would, and that right now, in terms of organizational need, it would probably be Ryan Bacher. But I wouldn't go for Ryan Bacher at five. Not at five. No way. No way. Then, then you have to consider, which again I think would be ludicrous, considering who you can take in the top uh, in the top uh, five of this draft. If they went for Ryan Bacher, they got to look at teams a couple of spots after them and trade and have them trade up to five and get something additional, drop down to whatever nine, ten, or what have you, wherever he well, might okay, be. Okay, so I guess that's my question to you: Is would you trade the pick if no. it meant that you? Okay. No. I would not trade the pick. No, sir. No, sir, I would not. I mean, blow me away with an offer that's so outrageous. Okay, of course, anything's happening. I'm never going to not take a phone call. But no, I'm not shopping it. I'm not going out to anybody saying, whoa, what do you got for me? Like, no, I'm not doing that. Not in this draft. I think the kid that they're going to take at five is going to be an incredibly, incredibly useful player on this team. These are these are very high quality, high caliber uh, players that are in this draft. As far I mean, as far as anybody who's worth their salt in the terms of the scouting world say, I don't consider myself a scout. I've only seen highlights of all these kids. I'm a, perhaps a little bit more in touch with this than maybe the casual casual fans. So I don't, you know, it is what it is. I completely put my faith in this organization and the leadership that's there right now with where they're putting the direction of this team. And whoever they grab at five has my full support. Whoever that might be. If 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 it's the Michkov thing, I think that's the one thing where you kind of got to do a little bit of a of a head scratch. Do they know something? Are they going to work something out? Are they going to get him out of Russia? No, no, it wouldn't be a head, it wouldn't be a head. Well, yeah, okay. The ta- in terms of talent and in terms of the player himself and the prospect, it wouldn't be a head scratcher. So let's make let's get that clear. Get that out of the way. It's more what's going to happen after his contract is done. Is he going to be able to get to the NHL? Um, you know, 
is he going to be stuck in North America, in North America, in the KHL or in Russia? That it's those things. Those are the questions. That's what makes it a head scratcher if they go. With well, well, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. Oh, my camera went nuts again. I'm not suggesting because oh they shouldn't take him at five because he, he his talent's not there. It's it's entirely his situation is unfortunate. It's entirely predicated on the fact that he has this issue with with the the political uh, situation that's happening with Russia and the fact that he has a contract that that I think locks him down till he's like 25 or something. Like it's it's just one of those things. It's it's just crazy. It is how it is. But look what happened to the last guy that was somewhat similar like that. Kaprizov was, I think, a similar situation. He came very late, and look what he's doing over in Minnesota. So would you mind waiting three years to get a Kaprizov? Yeah, I would. You would mind waiting the three years? Yeah. If I know for sure that we could, he's going to come – Come over? Yeah, I would wait for a Kaprizov. Oh, you would wait. Okay. I thought you said, yeah, you, you wouldn't want to wait. No, no, I um, would wait for Kaprizov. 100%. Okay. It's Kaprizov. Okay. Look, look what the guy's doing in the NHL. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he would have won 100 prime, developed, ready when this team theoretically is competing. But so, the other thing is, is how, yeah. how many players actually turned into a Kaprizov type? I mean, is he, is he theoretically. On paper, I believe he's a more um, accomplished, like prospect in his draft than Kaprizov was in his. Kaprizov, I think, was drafted in the fifth round or something, some yeah, some crazy drafted, thing. So, yeah. So, like, you would imagine that if you do grab Michkov and you don't mind waiting, you likely will be getting something similar to Mich uh, to uh, Kaprizov, if if not better. So, yeah, if he's there at five and, and they take him, yeah, I'm cool with it. It kind of sucks because you want to see the prospect often. You want to see the prospect here um, and then potentially be with the team like sooner than three plus years. But, again, this kid is like a lot of people were calling him the Russian Bedard, man. Like he's that skilled. If he's at five, how do you pass on that? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Maybe because Montreal would want to work on uh, work on that player sooner rather than later. Fair. I mean, again, right? If now that would be fun. If Mishkov's there at five and they don't select him, that means a couple of these other guys were taken already, right? And now Mishkov's there at five. So, like, who's left? And then they grab potentially. Like, imagine they grab a Benson. Brian Brian Wild would lose lose his mind probably, but imagine Michkov still there and they take Benson. Michkov drops down to six or seven or some nonsense. I mean, it's wild. I mean, listen, the two things have happened tonight. Two things. One, we can no longer, uh, or rather, we no longer have to talk about this whole oh, what if they get Bedard and look what it might change and this that and if they get Bedard now they're going to still be interested in Dubois and blah blah blah. That narrative is dead. It's gone. Now we can talk about more realistic picks that are going to be available at five um, and how they might round out the team. Will they come right away? Like a Will Smith, for example, uh, he, um, he already um, said he's going back to school, so he wouldn't come next year for sure. Um, you know, if, 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 if a lot of people have Zach Smith, uh, uh, Zach Smith, Will Smith as high as, um, as three. Zach Smith. Yeah, Zach Smith. But, uh, yeah, listen, it's uh, not as good as it could have been of a night, but it's certainly not nearly as bad as it could have been of a night. So for that, I'm happy. I think five, five is a fine place for them to pick. They're going to get a really quality player. That's my honest live take on the subject for tonight. I agree. I enjoyed I had fun. <laughs> And we hope all you did too. I know you're going to be watching this uh, the, the following day. So if you if you sped through it and just got to our reactions to things, then great. Uh, if you crazily watched this whole 40 plus minute episode the day after this was live, uh, well, thank you very much. We love you. Um, and of course, we didn't throw this out in the beginning. This is more of a, a one off of our typical episodes, but you know, like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. It helps. We appreciate it. Um, and then hopefully we're going to get something out again, our legitimate episode in the very near future with hopefully Dave being back. Um, at which point I think we're going to go over in more detail, 
uh, the the most likely top five players that are going to be there in the draft, um, and who would fit best on the Canadians? Who who would actually make this team that much better to really push them to that next level? Final thought, Vito. Tune into the next episode because it'll be fun. Deep and insightful as always. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you everybody for watching and listening. And we hope you had fun too. Um, and on that note, for Vito and Matt, this was Get Pucked.